everybody. Uh, welcome to Tammy Dale Podcast. I'm Tammy Adele Williams, and today uh, with me is Miles Musenden. And I probably just said that all wrong and just chopped uh, it all up. Uh, Musenden. Yes. <laughs> there you go. Musenden. Uh -huh. He is an actor, an actor, and you have played in a lot of roles. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how he really got his start as a stand-in. <laughs> <laughs> How do you stand in? Uh, Tell me about standing in. Let's just start there before we get to his role in Cloak and Dagger. Ooh. Wow. Okay. Um, how do you stand in? I mean, as in what you do or how do you become a stand in? What do you do? Like when you, you go there and I'm sure you're chosen because you, you probably look like the actor or the mm -hmm. same physique and things like that. Yeah. So what is that like when it's time for you to, you know, it's like, okay, come stand in for so-and-so and whoever you stood in for, yeah. what's that experience like? Um, you know, it depends on where you go and who you're working with. I, my my standing experience, I started, I was doing it at Tyler Perry Studios. Mm -hmm. You know, so with, with, um, with uh, Mr. Perry, you know, when you stand in, you actually do all the work. So you're, you're um, it's really to get the lighting and that, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So you're, they're trying to get the lighting right, they're trying to get the shots right and all that kind of stuff. So, but we actually do the lines. Oh, so okay, like okay. When, when I was standing in, we would, I would study the lines, I would be off book, off book meaning you memorize all the lines, that type of thing. And uh, we would go through the whole process and play the scene out uh, so that they get everything right. And so while the actors are putting on their wardrobe and getting makeup done, the stand-ins are actually there doing the scene and getting it ready so the actors can just come in and just go. Wow, so you do basically do everything. Is that how you, did you know at that point um, that hey, I, you know, I want to like be the actor at some point, or you uh, already always had that dream, and this was like a part of your process. You know, it's uh, a absolutely. I, I I knew I wanted to be an actor because I was. Um, yeah, I used to act in theater, and I was acting from when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. But uh, when I started doing standing work, I really wanted to understand the difference in theater and mm -hmm. film and television. So, yeah. to me, standing work was like the perfect segue to be able to do that and be able to get that difference and understand lighting and understand you know the, the, the different nuance in doing film as opposed to doing stage mm -hmm. so uh, standing for me I was doing plays you know mm -hmm. and uh, um, I wanted to do I wanted to do film and television so standing was a way for me to get paid <laughs> to you know to learn <laughs> you know what I mean oh, so yeah good. yeah yeah so I went in there kind of with that mindset so it was given 100% all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So would you advise like someone who wants to get into acting to look at the possibility of starting as a stand-in or is that kind of um, or an extra or what would, what would uh, you think? I, I, to be honest with you, I, I wouldn't. I mean, there are, I, I would say this, if you're going to do standing work, do it one place. Mm. And understand in that one place that you might not, uh, you probably won't advance much in that place. Okay. Because in this business, they kind of like, like to put you in a box <laughs> you know yeah. you know so if you're yeah. if you're a stand-in mm -hmm. you're a stand-in okay you know um and i've i've fought in fact i still have some challenges with that with uh mm -hmm. casting directors like there's several casting directors that came out of Tyler Perry studio so yes. they knew me as a stand-in so uh i've never worked for those casting directors as an actor because they in their mind it's hard for them to break out of seeing me as a stand-in because that's mm -hmm. what they know me as that's what they saw me as so I think that it, it can hurt your career. So mm -hmm. actually that, that forced me to have to go expand my territory. So because, because at, at one time those cast directors, there was only a few, there wasn't as much mm -hmm. work as there is in Atlanta now, back you know, 10 years ago, uh, whatever it is, uh, there were much fewer and much fewer projects. So yeah. because I had three of those uh, casting directors that came out of Tyler Perry Studios, that's like half the casting directors in the market. And they all <laughs> saw you as Yes, they in. saw me as a stand. Well, when did they see you in this TV series? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, well, they've seen me in a lot of TV. I've been in a lot of shows, so I don't know. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> okay, <laughs> hopefully, that'll be the difference. Okay, I got yeah. you. No, you know what? You have done a lot. You know, yeah. from Army Wives, mm -hmm. Queen Sugar. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, Spider Man: Homecoming. All right, um, Stranger Things. Yeah, I Tanya, mm -hmm. and you play different kind of roles. Yeah. On the police officers, though, is there something like about this officer park ranger type um, of things that sometimes you, you, you know? <laughs> yeah, I played a lot of uh, authority figures, law mm -hmm. enforcement, that type of thing. Um, again, in the business, like you know, my first role on television was this notification officer in Army Wise, where I was an officer in uniform and I'm um, 
letting these folks know that their son has died. Um, my next role, not the very next one, but I did a lot of roles after that mm -hmm. that was in that same vein, so it's kind of easy to put you in a box. Um, you know, which if, to me, if you're working, I was fine with that. Um, and especially when you're, when you're coming up and you're, you're, you're just getting your, your, your footing in film and television, um, you just want to work and you want to mm -hmm. take every opportunity to come. So right. they know you can do that because you've done it. So they keep giving you, giving you that, giving you that. And uh, another thing, like in this, in, in, in the market here um, in the Southeast, uh, uh, for a long time, like my, I, I remember my agent would, uh, early, one of my first agents would say to me, oh, make sure you know, um, when I'm going on audition, mm -hmm. oh, make sure you're off book, you know all the lines, and you know, you're perfect with it, and this and that. And you would kind of be so stiff and rigid mm -hmm. and go into, I can't mess up, I gotta be perfect. But that lends itself to you being the guy to say, oh, he went that way, or you're, you're under arrest, something just simple, and say a couple lines, <laughs> you know, and move out. But okay. as as um, as I grew in my understanding, uh, you know, uh, of this thing mm -hmm. came and I, I realized, okay, you gotta be loose, you gotta be free, mm -hmm. you have to use your, in trust your instincts. And as I became to do that, I became more of a person. So, you know, I, I started now being able to do these other roles, you know, and they got to see me. So if I play a role, I can play this drunk guy from whatever, you know, and then I start playing these the, the different roles. Yeah, yeah. But mostly at the beginning, it was mostly cops and, and lawyers and, and officers and you know uh, yeah. military guys yeah you mm -hmm. know what I like is you're talking about these different roles that you've done mm -hmm. miles has a, a, a book here now you had this when you were from I was doing standing stand -in. yes he was doing a stand in this mm -hmm. book here but what's so interesting about this book not only is this great photo but um, on the back he wrote I don't know if you guys can see this but it says smiles series regular yes and then his last name mm -hmm. okay so this is why you were standing. So you, were yes. you like speaking things into existence? Why did you write this on the back of the book? And, and what's the story behind that? Absolutely. Um, I was speaking into existence. You know, <laughs> um, when I, I was doing, uh, I used to do these skits at, uh, I used to go to this mega church and I would do these skits before mm -hmm. the pastor would preach. And, um, excuse me, he said something that resonated with me. He said, discover, develop, and dist then, then distribute. Mm -hmm. So uh, for me, it was a rediscovery that I loved acting. I loved, I loved the arts. Um, so I felt like I was developing it at that time. And it would become, there would come a time when I would be able to distribute you know, what I developed. And so I felt like something was gonna happen. I was gonna be a series regular. So mm -hmm. I had that in my mind from almost from the beginning when I realized that this is something that is real, that could really happen. Because for a long time I didn't think it was possible, to be honest with you. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then, um, but when I realized this is possible, then I feel like I'm going to take it to the full out extent. So for me at the time, series regular was was my goal, and that's what I wanted mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what you say? I didn't think it was possible. You mm -hmm. know, and sometimes when people, you know, they want to become actors. Yes. You know, and others around them may not take it seriously. Oh, you want to be an actor? Ah, you know. Right. And you actually got. Oh, two things. I want you to tell me when you felt that, yes, I could do it, this for real. Mm -hmm. And then tell me what happened when someone else actually saw this <laughs> and then take it seriously. Okay. Um, you know, there was a, there was a sister at, uh, at the church, because we used to actually train at the church because I became mm -hmm. part of the drama ministry there. And uh, her, her son um, was on uh, some movie or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was some Martin movie. He played the, the son or something like that. And um, just seeing somebody I knew that I conversate with and I'm next to, like I'm next to you, actually having an agent and being in a movie was like, wow. You know, it's because it, it always seemed like a far off thing to me. Yeah. And I just didn't see it as something that was attainable. So I was very content just doing uh, plays and church uh, church plays and, mm -hmm. and and skits before pastor would preach and that that was I was fine with that, um, but when I saw that that was possible, I was like, hey, wow, that that that's pretty interesting. So uh, I started doing. And I, tell me what I, I'm hoping I'm answering your question. Mm -hmm. I started doing um, what you call uh, uh, independent little independent films. People have these films short, and like short, short films, films and that type of like thing, that. student okay. films. And I was doing it for free all around in the, and I was living here in, in the Atlanta area. Yeah. And, uh, but then people started calling me all over the place to do this work for free. Now, I used to do real estate development, so you know I had a business, so this was stuff that I did as a hobby. Right. Um, as a hobby in my spare time. And um, 
when uh, our President Bush was in and uh, we had a crash in the market, uh -huh. um, I went from doing very well yeah. to uh, being bankrupt. And it was, uh, it was very, it was, uh, it was a tough time for me. So uh, at the time I used to do acting as a hobby and I would do standing work every once in a while just because I liked it. I would do um, extra work every once in a while because I liked it. So when I realized that my business was, was just tanked and I yeah. was bankrupt, I had to start all over from scratch. I said, well, let me do something that I love and that I enjoy doing. So I said, you know what, I'm, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna make something happen with it. And I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a series regular, but I have to start somewhere. And I started doing standing work at Tyler Perry Studio full time, um, five days a week, <laughs> you know, every day. Because he shoots a lot of content. Mm -hmm. Therefore, standing in was really good for you over there. Yes, 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 he, yes. He, he cranks it out. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I love yeah. Tyler Perry. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful to, um, to him because yeah. him creating that, that opportunity gave me a chance. Even though I never worked for Tyler Perry as a principal actor, I only did stand in work mm -hmm. over there. Um, but I learned so much to the point where when I, when I did Army Wives, um, I had so much standing work. I was so used to being on set and working that it was like a walk in the park. It was just yeah. e easy for me to do. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I love what you said a few minutes ago. Like when you got started, it was, it was a hobby, but you loved it. Mm -hmm. You loved it. And uh, you end up walking in it and now you're doing it all the time. You, you got into it because of your other job, you mm -hmm. know, just things just didn't, well, you know, it yeah. was blah. So, um, um, and now you're doing it all the time, but I also love the fact that you did a few items for free, mm -hmm. just to kind of build your resume. Mm -hmm. Not that you have to work for free, because right. you, you, we can't do that mm -hmm. all the time, because you know we, we have to eat. Eating is as important, yeah. you know. And uh, um, but you did it to kind of like start kind of building your resume. Yeah. Kind of thing. yeah so and then I, plus, I was that. a I was a six figure guy, so you, just, you, know, oh you know, I was. Oh my God! You six figures in real estate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I was making good money, so I didn't really need the money. I mean, right, I, right. I used to pull up doing standing work and driving a seventy thousand dollar car. Yeah. You, know, yeah. you know, so it was actually people were like, well. Thinking, yeah. who's this guy? Oh, he's a stand-in? It doesn't make sense, yeah, yeah. but you know, yeah. for, for me, it did. And, and one one person on the series saw this right here. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say, yeah, we, we, we don't <laughs> the, care the, who it was. There's a, young, like a young lady, and she's really, she's, she's cool. She, I mean, she and I are really Let's cool right now. Let's just put our picture on the screen right now. No, just kidding. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, just kidding. Not at uh, all. Um, but um, uh, she, she, she's like, oh, ha ha, you know, she, like, she laughed at me. <laughs> I, ha I happen to have my book because we were, you know, stand-ins. We have our scripts and I have my, yeah, I have yeah, my book, yeah. my script, and it was just happened to be there. And she looked at it and she laughed. She's like, who does that? You, you know, like um, it was ridiculous to her. Mm -hmm. And she was a day player on the show, meaning she worked like, you know, just did like a one episode and, you know, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. um, worked for the day or a couple of days. And, you know, I don't think she meant harm. It was just her perception, like who writes series regular on their book that's a stand-in. Uh -huh. um, but in my mind, I knew that this was temporary. Yeah. I knew that I was going to be moving from there uh, to something. Because even when I was doing stand-in work, eventually I, I used to direct the stand-ins. So I would, we would do the show, yeah. I would direct them, I would jump in there, we would do the scenes. So it was a lot of fun. I learned a lot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And now he is a series regular. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Awesome. Let's talk about Cloak and Dagger. Yes. This is a Marvel TV series, and I love this shirt here. Okay. He, he, mm. I'm sure he's going to let me have it. Okay. So, okay. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll talk about this off, off camera. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> uh, but, you know what? Tell me about this series. I mean, I saw it, and um, uh, I, I love Marvel stuff. You know, mm. Totally Marvel geek. And just on the sidebar, he did go, this is his pass to the Avengers Infinity War mm -hmm. red carpet. And um, I was able to go to the screening here in Atlanta. Yes. And we won't talk about this film because it is so great. And yeah. there's so many things in this film. Mm -hmm. Infinity War, if you haven't seen it, yeah. you got to go, go see it. You got to go see it. But he's a part of the Marvel Universe. Yes. Um, tell me about Cloak and Dagger. Wow, um, Cloak and Dagger, uh, coming of age, uh, two teens that that have very dissimilar backgrounds, but they both had some tragic beginnings, mm -hmm. and they were linked. They didn't know it at the time, but they they were linked. And um, later on, as the as they got uh, to be, um, they had some tra childhood trauma. But as they became teenagers, they kind of found themselves together and realized that they were linked. Mm -hmm. um, and that they had these extraordinary powers. And then when they got together, that the powers were exponentially even more powerful. Uh, uh, better so, together. Yes, okay. yes, uh, awesome. better together. Well, <laughs> I mean, if they, if they, if they use it right, <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> okay. you know, uh, and, uh, so they, 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 um, 
they actually help each other cope mm -hmm. because they're dealing with all the all the issues of being a teenager yeah. and some. Um, so they actually are able to work together and help each other and uh, you know help deal with a lot of the issues. I mean, everything doesn't go smoothly, but they find a way together to make it work out. Uh, now, the, what I love about the show is that without powers it's just an amazing story um yeah. and it's a great it's a great story with some great talent great actors but then you had the, with the powers like icing on the cake so it was a, as a whole another dimension to it yeah. um the the the, sh the project was like any different from any, anything i've been on whereas uh, for a tv show they did like a it's like every every episode was like a film in and of itself mm -hmm. so it's like little short movies in and of itself and um, they they actually the directors were all uh Film directors, yeah, they were right. all people that did right. did movies and did uh, did film. So, so it's it's coming from a little bit of a different angle than uh, yeah. than most of the superhero genre type films that you see. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. Check out the trailers. So I saw a couple of yeah. those trailers. Check out those trailers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you pa play a character named Michael. Yeah, Michael uh, Johnson. my, Who my is character mm -hmm. was formerly called Michael Johnson. They changed his name to Otis Johnson now. Yeah, so I play Otis Johnson, and um, my son, uh, who's played by Orbit Joseph, mm -hmm. is Tyrone um, in the show, uh, also known as Cloak. Okay. So, you know, we, as a family, had some real tragic things that happened that affected us. And, you know, it's just like in the, in the, in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if people... I say this, we, uh, many people of color, where I come from anyway, in Brooklyn, you know, people getting hurt, killed, going to prison, all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And it's like, I think that we have almost um, PTSD. You know, I, yeah. I, 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 I know it sounds crazy, but yeah. when you grow up and seeing all these things, it affects you. You know, so in the, in the, in the, in Cloak and Dagger, our family has been through some traumatic um, um, events, and I mm -hmm. think that we have a form of PTSD in, in our mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. like a lot of people do in real life and operate and don't even know it. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, so we get to flush some of those things out and deal with that stuff. And um, wow, I'm drama looking ensues. Forward to just mm -hmm. seeing how the characters grow, how the storyline grows, and I know you can't tell us any secrets, yeah. and I'm not going to try and press them yeah, on that. No spoilers. You know, because no spoiler alerts here. Uh -huh. um, uh, uh, but congratulations on Thank this you. on this role. Thank um, you so much. Going from where you started as yeah. I'm just doing it as a hobby to landing a role in the Marvel universe. That's yeah. pretty. That's pretty awesome. There. Pretty incredible. Let's let's you know we like for people you know we do this because we want people to kind of um, fulfill their dreams you mm -hmm. know their goals okay. you know uh, if they want to be an actor we're here to kind of help you know share some insight. Um, and help them live their dreams. So we're gonna look into this dream box for a few minutes and we're gonna find some things that kinda uh, were defining moments in Miles' life. So let's just share some of okay. what kinda launch you into your dream. Okay, so first thing we have here is a New York license plate. I bet I know where this is from. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Other than New York, um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a that's, uh, New York license plate off, off my motorcycle. You know, mm -hmm. um, that uh, I brought with me uh, when I when I came, you know, well, I live in New York still now, but, you know, okay. I, I go okay. back and forth. But, um, yeah, and and I think my my upbringing in New York um, plays out a lot in the role I play with this character. Mm -hmm. um, because, again, there's just a lot of traumatic stuff that we go through growing yeah. up in yeah. Brooklyn yeah. in the hood, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. You know, I bring a lot of that into into the role, and I, I'm so thankful that you know, um, Gina Blythewood, um, you know, loving basketball, mm -hmm, fame, mm -hmm, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. She's a uh, she was one of the producers and um, director of the first episode, and her, along with the other directors on on the on the project, they allowed me to just do me. You know what I'm saying, and, and and let those things come out. I, I have no idea how it's gonna. I hope it works. <laughs> you know, I have to trust the directors that it's gonna yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. But um, those experiences uh, uh, that in, in in growing up in Brooklyn yeah. have truly affected my work and in, in the different things I do. So I feel like I feel like I'm I'm repping for Atlanta, but I'm also repping for Brooklyn. I'm also repping for New York, and I'm bringing that the realness that comes from there, and I'm bringing mm -hmm. it. I'm putting it on screen for the for the world to see. Yeah. You know, um, because Brooklyn lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I love it. You were, uh, he was born in Britain. 
Yes, London. So, mm-hmm. London. We're in London as well. And UK. Okay, let's check out, see what else is here. Um, acting is believing. Yes. Tell me about this book here. Um, wow, I, you know, uh, that is a newer edition, but the one I actually first bought my old one. It's all decrepit mm-hmm. and broken down. Um, I got this book years ago when I was acting as a, you know, I started when I was nine. So um, when I was uh, at uh, Academy of Dramatic Arts, I got that book, um, and it it you know kind of deals with um, Stanislavski and it kind of d- teaches method and teaches about acting, mm-hmm. and I it's. Um, why I thought it was important to bring in this book to share is that I meet so many people, and I used to teach, I used to coach acting as mm-hmm, well, mm-hmm. and I would meet so many people that wanted, they want to do what I'm doing, they want to get, they want to be in the business, um, but they don't want to put the work in. Ah, uh, you know, everyone wants to win, but not everybody wants to do the work. Yes. To help them to win. And yeah. I understand that it looks easy. It looks like something that anybody can do. But, you know, if, if, if you see somebody playing an instrument, you know, and they're brilliant at it, mm-hmm. they may look, make it look easy, but you don't think you can go just, okay, give me the instrument, let me, let me, let me, let me just blow, you know, so just, put, just, what do I do, I just press this? You know what I'm saying? You don't do that. You go yeah. and you put the work in, you train. Those people, tr- to be a virtuoso and to be, as, to be great to the point where people are going to pay to see you, you have to be amazing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you, so... Uh, for them to make it look easy, they have to have did the work. So what you don't see is what's done in the dark. Mm-hmm. All the work that you didn't see, you know, um, that you're seeing on screen, there's a lot of work that went into that. Yeah. So acting is believing. Acting is, is putting the work in. Um, uh, one of my coaches once said to me, um, the difference between an amateur and a professional, an amateur works hard to finally get it right, whereas a professional works hard to never get it wrong. Mm. So... I work, I work hard, and even, you know, I got the role, uh, I mean, the dream role of working for Disney and Marvel mm-hmm. at the same time, right, yeah. on, on, this, uh, on, this, on this great uh, project. Mm-hmm. And we did the pilot, but in between pilot, we had a few months, you know, um, lag time you know, after we did the pilot before we uh, actually shot the first season. So I could, I mean, I already had the role. I'm good. I mean, yeah. I could just yeah. chill. But what I did was I went, I went to New York, um, um, and I worked with Susan Batson, you know, and I mean, five days a week, you know, I was working every day, you know, and this is gut wrenching, you know, we work long hours and we, you know, there's a lot of emotional work that we do and it's a lot of stuff. So, um, yeah, I could have just rested on what I had already, but no, I wanted to be as sharp as possible. I mean, Gloria Rubin plays my wife on the show. I mean, you, you know, this is an amazing actress, you know, uh, uh, award-winning actress, been doing this stuff for yeah. 20-something so years. keep it training, always training. Yes. Yeah, don't just, because you're, you got a role, mm-hmm. just keep working it, work it out. Yes. Yeah, they used to say the same thing about comedians, and you can find some famous comedians in, you know, comedy mm-hmm. places, and just working on their, just working out. Yes, just working yeah, out exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're on the road, they're doing well, but still just working out. Yes. Working out, perfecting that craft. All right. Oh, okay. One last thing here. Okay, I see a script. Mm-hmm. Script, obviously. Mm-hmm. Army wise, a lot of signatures on it. Yes. So was this your? That first? was my first role, my first television role um, on Army Wise. I did two or three episodes, um, and yes. it was it was uh, it was an amazing time. You know, I think I mentioned before that the the standing work I was doing actually informed me and made it easier mm-hmm, for me to, to, mm-hmm. to walk in and do this because I didn't have to worry about where my lighting was and how to cross over to from right. one spot to the other and that type of thing. Um, so I, I, when I did this role, it's, it's amazing because, you know, they actually did a nationwide search for this uh, character. They could not find somebody to play this character. Um, so it, it, I don't know, it's just one of those things where I, the right, person at the right time doing the right, right thing right. and um uh, when i did that show in that episode again because it was my first my first show i had to get everybody to just sign it of i mean course. you got sterling sterling brown who's like a uh. Uh, w- winning emmys and all kinds of stuff now and um he's a great actor great actor kim delaney wendy uh, you know and, and they were great they were great to work with they welcomed me and uh it was an amazing thing sterling mm-hmm. the sterling, the sterling. <laughs> yes Huh? This from, is us. Yes, yes from this, this is, is us. us. Yes, 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 he yes. Brilliant. He was brilliant from back brilliant. then. Yeah. yeah so, wow. You know, it was just um, just a great time. And you know, 
well, there's a whole another long story I can tell you about about that uh -huh. um, that that particular role. But I don't know if we have time yeah. for all that. I, maybe that for next for the next interview. Part, we do our part two. Yes. You know what? It's been awesome talking to you. Mm -hmm. um, really, really awesome. And you've had a great production, a great journey. As I said, production journey, a great journey uh, in this uh, this industry. Yes. So, what advice? Lastly, gives what advice would you give someone who's trying to get in as an actor? We we talked about a lot of things. But, yeah. You know, one last I, I would say what uh, what was said to me uh, after I was, did a skit at my church. The pastor said, "Discover, develop, then distribute." So I th I'd say, you know, there are different types of actors. You get in where you fit in. Some actors, you might be a really good-looking guy with great posture and a great jawline, and mm -hmm. you might be good for soap opera. Somebody might be good really great at comedy type stuff you know yeah. you're just naturally funny and you you know and some people might be good for high-end drama yeah i like high-end drama right and it's not necessarily what you like but what you happen to be good at you know um so discover that if you already know you like acting discover what what are you good at what do people see in you what do they see you you fit discover that then develop it so you got to work you got to go i'm not talking about go to class for one one uh month and think you're ready to go. No, keep keep going, keep training, keep sharpening your tool. And as you're sharpening, while you're sharpening, still go out for work. You know, uh, you can still go after stuff where you are, wherever you are. Mm -hmm. But keep training, keep training, keep training. What I know, what one thing I can say is, the harder I work, the luckier I get. And it'll be the same thing for you. The harder you work, the luck you, you'll start booking more. You got that? It, yeah, it's luck, but it's luck because you you, you put the work in. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? And then you'll be able, then you'll start distributing. Before you know it, the roles will start coming. Yes, I'm blessed and fortunate to get this role on Cloak and Dagger, um, but at the same time, I was auditioning for series regular work regularly. You know, mm -hmm. um, in fact, the day that I was told about uh, Cloak and Dagger. My agent was trying to reach me all day, but I was, uh, um, it was an agent that was uh, not, didn't know what I was, that was uh, auditioning for some other series, regular stuff mm -hmm. in, in New York. And um, so I was busy doing the work. And yeah. then it just came upon me. It's like, I, I forgot I even auditioned for <laughs> Cloak and Dagger. You know, so it'll overtake you. Yeah. Well, Does that's that awesome. answer the question? That the yes, question. great. One more thing. Mm -hmm. One more thing. This is our happy day. We want you to have a happy day. Okay. Okay. So I want to have a happy day too. We have a happy day. Um, <laughs> yes. So we have a little happy day card, a little punch card, and we'll, I'm gonna let you open that and read it. Oh, I might need my glasses for this. Let's you see. Happy glasses? day. I'll help you read open it. here. I might need my glasses, but I help you read it. You say I open it? Yep. You gotta pop it open. Just kind of um, do a little pop. Open. Ah, there oh, from go. there. I yeah. see. I see. Okay. What does it say? See, your smile makes the world a little brighter. Oh, <laughs> isn't that? Now Aww. those pearlies in. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you so much for having me, we Tammy. Appreciate it. it was yes, fun. it was thank fun. You. Loved it. Guys, uh, check him out on Cloak and Dagger, um, free form. Yes, it's on free form, and uh, yeah, uh, keep up with him. He's going to be doing even greater. greater yeah, greater, yeah. Greater Follow things. me on Twitter at yeah. Miles Mustin. Follow me on Instagram. Yeah. yeah, all that. Do that. Thank you. Sweet, thank you. Yay! Yay.